Okay, well, welcome to the Middlesex Moments radio show. I'm Dr. Anna Wasesha, president of Middlesex Community College, and joining me today are two of my colleagues, John Morris, who teaches in the biology department and is the chair of the science division, and Kate Miller, who is the coordinator of this new Department of Labor grant that we've, it's hardly new, it's a three-year grant and we're a year into it, right? Right, right. So she's the coordinator of our midlife cycle, (laughs) Department of Labor grant in health and life science. And we wanted to use this time on the radio today to talk about the new programs that we're starting here at Middlesex and the ones we're tuning up and uh, bringing into the modern day and why people might even want to think about going into the sciences. Why don't we start with why in the world would anybody want to go into the sciences, Kate? Okay, well, there's actually a lot of good reasons. And and as a biologist myself, I think, why wouldn't anybody want to go into (laughs) the sciences? But part of the reason is that the projections for jobs in what are called STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, and math, are, are good. The prognosis is good for growth in those sectors, even while there is some disagreement about how rapid that growth would be and and how sustained it would be. But when we talk about those types of careers and training here at Middlesex, we're including things that, uh, we're including things like engineering, um, computer engineering technology, health information management. So it applies uh, some of those skills to information technology. So it's a whole other field that people may not associate when they think of science. So what if people are interested in in growing fields, right? Because most people are motivated to find work in the workforce and live a good life. But they have to kind of make an interior inventory of the things that they might be able to bring to the college to be able to succeed in a program. So what kind of background does somebody need? Actually, we're accepting students with very little or no college education at all, and they can come in the door and they can sit down with us and we can counsel them about where they should go, what it is that they would need to do first. The college and this grant recognize that the majority of people who've been displaced by the economy, who are looking for career changes, are going to need to address prerequisites. They're going to need to take that intro bio that they never took. They might even need to take uh, a math. It's been a long time. They might need some boosters for that or boot camp or some other help. So we're prepared to take that type of individual as well as an individual who has a bachelor's degree, went down a career path, the economy changed, now they're dislocated, um, they have some federal benefits they can use for college training, and they'd like to look into a career change. So it's really a wide variety of folks. And it sounds like you're interested in meeting up with prospective students who are almost any age, high school diploma to near, near retirement, if there is such a thing anymore. Absolutely. I think that's why so much faith was put into the community college system. So this grant comes out of a federal act to address folks who've been displaced by changes to the economy. And really, it looks to the community college system that has always done such a good job at dealing with a diverse population at variable levels of education and looks to expand our offerings for people. So why don't we take a break, and when we come back, let's talk with John about the history of the sciences here at Middlesex, because he can he's a first-hand witness to the things that have changed here. You, How long did you teach? When did Ten you years. start? So, Ten years. 1994. Yeah, that's a long time ago. All yeah. right. Well, we'll be right back. Well, welcome back to Middlesex Moments, right here on WLISWMRD, uh, broadcasting from Middletown, Connecticut. Today I'm talking with Kate Miller and John Morris. John teaches sciences here and organizes all of the science faculty, so they're all pulling in the same direction. He's the division chair. And Kate is the coordinator of our Department of Labor grant. What, what is right. the Health real? and Life Health Science. Health and Life Science. Yep. Well, first of all, I wanted to ask John this question, which is, when was the first year that you arrived here at Middlesex? 1994? 1994, I came to coordinate the new biotechnology program that the college was, you know, it was sort of visionary back then to start a program in biotechnology. And it was a new uh, industry in the state. It was starting to grow. There were lots of opportunities for our students, and many students got successfully trained and good jobs. Some of them got published in, you know, world-renowned journals like Science and uh, wow. yeah. very successful. But um, unfortunately, the, the economy changed and the program began to decline. And, but now we're in a revision. You mm-hmm. know, with Jackson Labs coming to the state, there's going to be a lot of new opportunities for jobs and careers. 
So it's, it's, it's another very exciting time for biotechnology in Connecticut. I think that, that actually that's one of the uh, wonderful things about community colleges too is that we do kind of, we try to stay very relevant to what's going on in the workforce so these programs do get either tuned up or introduced or mm-hmm. sometimes dropped if, there, if there's literally no need for them anymore. So I think it's hard to, under, you know, to envision if you aren't a scientist what a job in these fields would be like. So we could start with the biotechnology and the, they right. were publishing. What would somebody publish about and what kind of work would they have? Well, there's some really exciting things. Um, you know, some of the flashy things that some of our students worked on the um, discovering the DNA of the Neanderthal. Oh. And uh, so they, wow. the, the company that did all that research was uh, one that uh, quite a few of our students went to work with. Um, they discovered the whole genome sequence of um, James Watson, famous man who discovered DNA. They were the first one to help publish uh, what was called a proteome, which is a map of all the proteins in, what organism was that? Mm, i trying to think, I think it was a Drosophila or some sort of experimental organism, but they, it was the very first map of its kind and it was published in Science, in the Journal of Science. So they, they did yeah. some really cool things right. coming from uh, this college and going out into the world and making a difference. And you, you see that in all the different careers that we offer in science. There's lots of opportunities for students to start here and either go directly into a career or to transfer and, and go on to university. We've had another student who actually became the CEO of a small pharmaceutical company after she graduated from Middlesex and went to Yale and then um, worked her way up in a pharmaceutical company. So lots, lots of opportunities like that. Well, let's talk about some of the, the new fields and describe, if you could, just a little bit about what people, what kind of work people might get if they were to go into all these initials, HIM and CET. And okay. <laughs> so make, it, make it real for us. Help. Oh. All right. Well, one of the new exciting programs is a partnership with a local veterinary hospital called Piper Olson. And uh, it's, a tech, it's a program where um, students learn to become veterinary technologists and they assist the, the veterinarians. So it's a good way, it's either a entry level into a veterinary career or it's a stepping stone to become a veterinarian um, yourself. But uh, so that's a brand new program that started here. I'd like to sort of pick up on that and go to the side a bit. Steve Levy, who's the coordinator of that program, mm-hmm. made me realize that there's so much more to veterinary science than just direct care of animals too. Mm-hmm. So there's all the whole industry around food for animals and all the, the care items that animals have. And the, in his case, the kinds of things that you do when they get tick-borne illnesses or when they intersect with pests. And yeah, so there's, there's more than just working in a vet clinic as well to that. Well, that's right. And our pets are very important to us. Yeah. So we're willing <laughs> I to... I know they are to me, yeah. We're willing to spend money to take care of them. Yeah. And so it's a booming industry. Piper Olson has... Had just added a brand new uh, 24-hour emergency hospital facility, and Good to know. Uh, they're, they're yeah. planning to add additional facilities there, partially to accommodate the students from Middlesex so that they can have a, a place where they can uh, take their courses. So, um, you know, that's a great opportunity that the college has just started. There's another opportunity that this grant has enabled us to pursue, and that's called health information management. And if you've been to the doctors recently, you've probably noticed that your doctor walks in carrying a laptop or a tablet, and uh, instead of looking at you, the doctor might be just typing on the, the tablet. But what's really going on there is all of our medical records are being digitized, and it's going to make our medical history much more available and well, universally available, so you can go to any medical facility and they'll be able to pull up your medical records. Well, we need people that are able to convert old medical records into digital medical records, and we need people to be able to take the new technologies and move them forward. And so those are the people that would come here and take our HIM courses, Health Information Management. And uh, they graduate with a degree and then be able to get a job in a doctor's office or a hospital where they'd... Uh, you know, work work in this field, mm-hmm. um, and it's it's going to be universal. I mean, it's it's also part of the Affordable Care Act is that all of our health records need to become digitized. Um, I wonder if doctors still do dictation. You know, I, and I only say be. that I, I haven't a, seen it. I had a doctor in recently. Minnesota who was half my age, and she could not type. Mm-hmm. And she, you know, and she traded services all through college with other <laughs> students who would type for her. She just could not type. And Minnesota was totally into the HIM movement, and 
it was tough for her. I mean, she would <laughs> struggle looking for the keys on the well, accordion keyboard. Well, she'll be one of know? our graduates. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> she should do that. Yeah, it would make it a lot easier for her to practice medicine anymore, yeah, right? That's right. So, okay, what else have you got on your list? That's well, we another have a, set of initials. We have a newly revised environmental science program, which is very exciting. It's training people about the environment and about concepts and sustainability. This program, though, is really designed to help people transfer to universities. The, the other programs I've described, including the biotech program, uh, students can move directly into employment or transfer to a university and get a bachelor's or even a graduate degree. But the environmental science program is, is really intended to help people transfer. It's not to say that you can't get a job when you finish here, but the job's Entry-level jobs usually require a little bit more training, but this is a good place to start. It's an affordable place to start. We have a lot of excitement going on here um, on campus with this, uh, our sustainable efforts. And um, Actually, know, we already have a success story in that program. So there's a part of that program requires an internship, and uh, the recruitment and placement coordinator for the grant uh, got sort of a tip from the program coordinator that there was this company uh, looking to recruit folks and employ folks. And so she was able to talk with them and identify a student, and a student got a part-time job with an associate's degree at oh. that company. So it was, it was great. That's very exciting. Yeah. So lots of stories like that. Other programs that have benefited from the, this grant, we've completely revised our radiology technologist program. So oh, that's right, right, and that's that's a highly competitive program, right? It is, and, yeah. and uh, we've actually shortened the length of time of the program. So st instead of students taking, I think, two and a half years, they can complete it in two years now. You know, lots of opportunities in that field. Those students go to school year round, though, do they? Yeah, I think they might. They did. They they yeah. go school throughout the school year. They do a summer, and then they graduate the next spring. Right. Right. So it used to be two summers, but now we've cut off one of the I think summers. Actually, you know, I think that's a good idea, first of all, because the work world operates mm -hmm. 12 months out of the year. And secondly, you don't have any of the summer learning loss. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, you don't have to figure out what you're going to do in that period of time when you would really just as well get moving on your degree and get out into the workforce. So, The students in that program are really dedicated students, too. You can tell that they're motivated. They really want to get through the program and, and get out into the job mm -hmm. market. So they're, they're happy to go to school during that period of time. Right. It's so a lot of these programs are designed for transfer and also what in this business they're calling what stacked and laddered is it stacked is it a combination it's like shoots and ladders yeah, yeah. Stacked, stacked and latticed okay well i think um rad tech is a great program to talk about because uh, a number of people will apply there might be like 80 applicants um maybe 19 are chosen and so what happens to the other students who have been going about getting their prerequisites they've taken an intro bio course they've they've wanted to pursue this career choice because we are expanding our program offering, they're going to have more places to go. So with a lot of the prerequisites that they had for Rad Tech, they can enter almost any other um, health and life science or science division program. And that's what's called latticing, this ability to kind of move laterally with the goal of not losing time. So the other thing that we're doing with the grant is that we're going to go through a process this year of assessing our non-credit programs and seeing if we can assign some credit to those programs so that those students can stack those credits. So they may enter unsure about whether or not they can do the you know, college level work. They take a non-credit program, they succeed in it, they get some credits, they move up to a credit program, and down the road maybe get an associate's and then use that to get a bachelor's, etc. So the idea is to reduce the amount of time lost or wasted by a student. Well, I, I think that that's probably one of the most important things that the whole system is working on, is making sure that the courses that we offer are transferable between and among, first of all, the Connecticut State colleges and universities, but many of the privates, perhaps all of the privates, and the University of Connecticut and colleges and universities across the country. But I mean, actually, it's interesting. I've been um, uh, thinking a lot about the recession because I was um, seeing inequality for all for the second time yesterday. And one of the uh, impacts of the recession is people became less mobile, which, you know, um, they stayed where they, first of all, stayed where they had to because of their houses losing value. And then secondly, it was very expensive to relocate. So, so as a result, they were confined to the kinds of opportunities that were available where they lived. And now I think we'll see more, now that things are getting better, we'll see people migrating. Jackson Labs will certainly 
be a draw. Obviously, I'm running out of time for this segment, so we're going to just have to stop this conversation, and then we'll come back and pick it back up in just a moment. Well, welcome back to the Middlesex Moments Radio Show and to my conversation with John Morris and Kate Miller about allied and life sciences and careers and stacks and ladders. Only it's lattices, right? Lattice. Yeah, i got to get that straight. And we were just talking about how people may begin to move a little bit more than they used to during the, the deepest trough of the recession that we, we hope we're coming out of. Uh, and Kate mentioned to me over the break that there's a course that we're offering during the intercession. So talk about the course yeah. and also talk a little, what, what is intercession? Ah, intercession is a two-week, this year it's a two-week period between the fall and spring semesters where students can roll up their sleeves and in a pretty intensive format uh, accomplish a full course. So a lot of the courses offered are three credit. I don't believe we have any four credit. Um, And then there are a couple like the one I'd like to talk about that's a one credit course. So just to put it in context, this Health and Life Sciences grant um, has given us money to migrate some of our courses into an online format and to create new online and hybrid courses. And a hybrid course is a course where students would be uh, interacting with the instructor and other students and course material online for lectures, but may have one course period where they're on the ground in a laboratory, for example, doing practical work or doing um, hands-on work. And um, some of the feedback we've gotten is that some students, um, perhaps older students, are a little reluctant to take an online or hybrid course. They're concerned that they wouldn't know how to do it. They would get frustrated. Um, They don't feel confident in their basic computer skills. So partly in response to this, we've put together a one credit class and we've done this in conjunction with continuing education and with our IT faculty. Um, And this one credit class uh, takes place over two weeks and really prepares people to do computer work um, in particular for an online course, but really for anything, uh, using Facebook, uh, using an email account, attaching documents, filling out an online job, uh, job application. So it's, it's an extremely uh, helpful course, and we encourage people to take advantage of it. It's the first time it's been offered for credit, so students can take it either non-credit or for credit. And I believe the first time it's been offered in this one credit um, winter intercession format. So the hope is that if you wanted to take a spring online course, you take this first, um, and then you should be at least a little bit better prepared. So when does this start up? This starts January 2nd. Uh, students can enroll for it, register for, for it right now. And it goes from the 2nd of January to January 15th. It's 10 classes Monday through Friday, 9 to 10, 20. Um, so it's the type of format that you get a lot of hands-on assistance. I was Initially, I was thinking you were going to tell me it was all online. But actually, it's all on the ground. <laughs> no, not okay. at all. It's all on the ground. And if, if someone has never been a student here at the college before, they actually have to come in to register? Or they have to do something on, over the phone? Right. Continuing students, if they heard this radio show and thought, you know, I could really use that, could do they could actually register online. Yeah, mm-hmm. they can register but online. But once students become students at Middlesex, they can register online. So this is such an important course, right? Because there's nothing anymore, including looking for a job, applying for a job, yeah. registering for courses, any filing your taxes, you know, that you don't do online. Yeah, yeah. And, and people know that it's hard. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, the in- instructors know that it's hard for... Uh, somebody who really is not confident in this area, but um, you know the whole idea is to get them over that hump and, mm-hmm. and feel more comfortable. And we do offer another course that actually is a prerequisite for a lot of our programs right now. It's a Computer 101 um, because it's, it's, it recognizes the fact that in this world you really you really do need to have those computer skills to move ahead. Right, right. So all of these things start after January, but you are around now Absolutely. <laughs> and going into January and your staff yeah and John's around to some degree until yeah until the exams and the grades are turned in so what would you like to tell folks about how to find out more information it's mm-hmm. always helpful to this is a great time to come in and talk to science faculty um, who are program coordinators for different programs um, as well as the grant staff so Um, If somebody wants to find out more information online, they can go to the Middlesex website, which is mxcc.edu, and just search Health and Life Sciences is really the easiest way. It'll pop right up, 
Um, the web page has a list of all of the programs and all of the services of the grant. Uh, and most of those are linked to faculty or linked to the programs for more information and more details. But we, we invite people to contact our recruitment and placement coordinator directly. Her name is Carolyn Somer, and her telephone number is 860-343-5749. So if someone just wants to come in and chat about the different programs being offered, um, some of the support services that we offer students, uh, we pay special attention to those individuals who are veterans, who have WIA or TAA benefits, but really we're here to talk to anybody. Um, and we can also provide them some counseling on prior learning assessments, which is a way to assess previous training or coursework or life experiences or job experiences into credit that they can apply towards their, you know, towards their transcript. So there's a, a lot we can talk to them about. Well, how so should we shift gears and talk a little bit about how the two of you got involved in science in the first place? So I'm looking at John. So why are you a scientist? I guess because my mother decided to pick the name that I have. Or at least that's what she told me. She said when I was born, she wanted me to, she wanted me to be a doctor, and so she picked <laughs> my name because she thought it sounded good. And uh, oh, I great. quickly realized, well, once I was in, in college, I quickly realized that I don't like to be around sick people, but I really did like <laughs> science. So I decided to shift gears and, and started pursuing a science career. And uh, at first I, I thought I wanted to go into something, maybe fisheries or something in the outdoors. But I, at that time, molecular biology and, and genetic engineering were first being talked about. And uh, that was just so exciting to me. Um, you know, it just, it's a whole new world of discovery and learning about how the human body works and how life works. And it just captivated my imagination. And next thing I knew, I was enrolled in a PhD program and cloning things and uh, making recombinant molecules and sequencing genes. And, uh, you know, I was right there at the cutting edge for a long time. And that's when I decided I wanted to teach other people how to do it. So that's what brought me to Middlesex. Did you have any epiphanies along the way? I yes. think everybody should study biology. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was my of epiphany. Course. Because that's where the, you know, people are always asking the big question. What's the big question? What's the purpose of life? And right. so forth. And that's what is the biology meaning? tells you exactly. <laughs> Gives you the answer? Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, it's, it's, well, this is a little tongue in cheek, but sometimes biologists think of it this way, that we're all doing what we're doing because we're moving DNA molecules around. And it's DNA that really is driving us as humans and as, as life forms you know, replicating the DNA molecule. Right. But of course, I, it's tongue in cheek and I don't really believe that. It's, but, but you, you know, get a lot of answers about life, right, studying biology. Right. I'm hoping I live long enough to see the brain mapped. I mm -hmm. think, I think that's, yeah. that's going to tell us a lot. It's going to explain why I'm afraid of heights. That's all I really care about. <laughs> we'll be able but, to change your genes so you're no exactly. longer afraid of heights. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure. Well, where's <laughs> the fun in that? <laughs> <laughs> so Kate, what about you? Um, well, I had a I had a long career working in uh, sort of the br what people call the brown side of environmental work. I did recycling. I was recycling for New Haven. I worked on uh, environmental policy. I was an environmental educator, um, and I actually grew up thinking I wasn't smart enough to do science and math, and that I couldn't be a scientist. So. Um, I love having that type of student in my class when I do teach because I know that they're probably wrong. And um, my epiphany came when I, uh, I, I had this idea that I just couldn't stop thinking about the natural world. I was interested. I didn't know how it worked. I didn't understand enough about biology. And so I, I kind of timidly set out to learn more and took a intro biology class at Capital Community College as a parent of a young child and a little nervous about making a change. Um, and I was the most annoying student because I knew every answer and I <laughs> read every sentence of the biology book and I was determined to get an A plus and I loved it. Um, and so it kind of uh, really inspired a change in my career. I, I continued to take a couple of community college courses and then went on to Eastern, I mean to uh, Southern and Central. And then from there, I, I've gotten my master's and I've gotten my, um, my doctorate. So I, I feel a little bit like a poster child because uh, 
I was perfectly fine and um, capable of becoming a scientist, but somewhere along that line as a child, and maybe I'm old enough at a time when girls were not encouraged that way, I had gotten the idea that I, I didn't quite have the brain for it. So um, I was wrong, and I know a lot of other people think that way too. So. It's, a, it's wonderful that you bring this up, first of all, because uh, it's so satisfying to be, I was going to say to be educated, but it really isn't something that somebody does to you, it's something you do to yourself, so to educate oneself. But there is the issue of the representation of women and people of color in the fields, mm -hmm. and, and I imagine because our student body is pretty diverse in general that we would have lots of representation from people who historically wouldn't have, have had access to those opportunities to study the sciences. I'm, I'm proud to say that in the biological sciences, it's, not it's a very case. diverse. Yeah. Okay. It's, very it's diverse. actually yeah. a very open field. There's a lot of opportunities, a lot of willingness to you know, accept everybody. Yep, absolutely. And, and I think at a community college, it's probably as or more diverse than anywhere else. I know, so. I know. <laughs> That's what I absolutely love about it. I want to thank you both for coming in to talk with me. And we're, as I said at the beginning, we're one year into a three-year program, yep. so we got to do this again uh, whenever you wish. Um, so we can encourage people, if they don't decide to, that they this is something they want to do in January, February, it shouldn't be February, it should be January, yeah. that they might think about the fall, might think about some other things. We have um, summer. We have, we have, have summer opportunities. Summer opportunities. Yeah. 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 Right? Come talk to us. Yes, that would be the, the message. And the come talk to us is uh, the number I'm reading upside down is 860-343-5749 yep. to talk with Carolyn. Mm -hmm. She can put you in touch with Kate. Kate yeah. can put you in touch with John. And there's probably something there about uh, the ways the genes connect, right? So yeah, I'm, I'm sure that we can bring it back to biology. And probably the best place to start is biology, right? Would that be the message we want to leave folks with? There's a lot of opportunities there's, in this state. Yeah, there, there really it's are. Growing. But it's, it's not limited to It's that, not limited. Sure. So thank you both for joining me today. Um, this has been the Middlesex Moments radio show, and I have been visiting with two of my treasured colleagues, John Morris from the Science Department and Kate Miller, who is the Curriculum Coordinator and Program Director of the uh, new Department of Labor grant program that we have going on here at the college. If you're interested in finding out more about that program, I think it shows up in the banner of our website. Yeah. And the website address is so easy and simple. It's mxcc.edu. I'm Anna Wasesha, president of Middlesex Community College, wishing you a good day.